so the brain is an electrical chemical organ. It generates electrical currents, which can be recorded by putting sensors on the scalp. And what you record there are voltage fluctuations measured in microvolts, millionths of a volt, very, very small. So you need an amplifier, a good quality amplifier to be able to observe and record that kind of activity. And those electrical potentials show up as signals that have particular shapes, it's called morphologies, and frequencies. And they're generally referred to as cortical oscillations. So our brain is using these signals to communicate distant parts of the brain and to bring them together, to bind them together in activity because the activity of our brains is very distributed. Right now I'm using my language area, my visual area, my memory area, okay? Uh, and these are not on the same location. Mm. So all these different parts of the brain have to be in constant communication for me to be able to have this conversation with you right now. So that's the function of these oscillations, and it's fascinating. And we keep learning more and more and more detail about how really intricate, and it's like a, a symphony orchestra that's, that's running all the time with different players, all right? And so these are like carrier waves. And you know, now there's 0.01 hertz signals, and even slower than that all the way up to several hundred hertz, which can be recorded by putting electrodes directly on the scalp. It's called electrocorticography. All right. So what I have is a 19 channel standard EEG equipment with using an electro cap. You saw the pictures. All right, so the cap has the sensors and these are already arranged in a particular configuration. It's called the 1020 placement. It's a convention that was invented in the 1940s, I think, so that everybody in the world knows what you're talking about. So they know where that C3 is left central, that T5 is left behind the ear, that FP1 is on the left side here, FP2 is on the right side, frontal pole, and so on. So it's just, a, it's called the 1020 convention. And if you use more electrodes, there's other conventions, but in general, it's a map of placements on the surface. So what I do to explore the effect of any treatment on the EEG is you first start by getting a suitable subject, you get them to agree to participate, and these are completely non-invasive and, and usually fun procedures because a lot of times the subjects are interested. They want to know what their brain shows. Mm -hmm. The usual comment is, oh, you're probably going to find that I'm brain dead. You know, it's all going to be flatlined. You don't see that ever. If you do, that's a serious neurological problem. And then people have, you know, abilities, they meditate, they go out of body, they, they've explored altered states, they're curious. Uh, you know, I, they think, I think they should be because I think it's a fascinating topic. So you record a baseline and the baseline that I've used for these recordings has been mostly eyes closed because with eyes closed, you don't have blinking artifacts. And... Mm -hmm. Most people who would be listening to these tapes might be doing it while they're lying down, relaxing, eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you get cleaner data. That's the purpose of the whole, that's the whole goal is to get good, clean, reliable data. If you don't have that, you cannot analyze it and come to any conclusion. Garbage in equals garbage out. So my focus is to do the cleanest possible EEG recording and then I can just all the rest just uh, follows I, I use NeuroGuide which is a world-class analysis system developed by Bob Thatcher 
used by thousands of clinicians around the world. It's, it's a very, very high uh, yield, high quality software. And I've been using it for about eight years now. And I just need to upgrade it because it's got new add-ons that can do more analysis and more fancy things. So but what I have is sufficient to answer the questions that you're interested in learning. So then you compare the baseline to what's going on when they're listening to the audio track. And what I have reported to you and, and showed you in pictures is the changes that you see in the EEG. They're, they're not subtle changes, they're quite dramatic changes. And they're all in the direction of slowing down the EEG frequencies. In other words, moving the subject out of their usual habitual state into theta, delta, and primarily delta, like deep delta. We're down in the two to four hertz, you know, one to two hertz, four hertz. That's kind of like a... a early uh, stage of, of deep sleep. If you, if you look at the EEG of sleep, the physiology of sleep, that's considered uh, stage one deep sleep. But so the subjects the, are not asleep. Sleep. Yeah. But the subjects are not sleeping. Mm -hmm. at, at least one of them. One of them started to snore, but most of them are not. They're aware... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this guy went out. But mm -hmm. apparently he goes out easily when he lies down and his partner says, you know, he's got that yeah. skill uh, uh, tendency. But So the, most of these subjects were aware that they were in a room with headphones listening to this and just enjoying the sort of the rain uh, sound. And their EEG was revealing that they were in a very deep altered state. So that's the bottom line. And, and the rest of it is all the details of how you measure that and how you present it in a way that, that, that proves that, that that's what's going on. Yeah, and I'll, let me also say that, that we found over the years that often people, when they first start using it, like the first, second session, the sleep thing. And I tell them, hey, if that's what happens, that's great. You just got a nap, you were stressed out and tired, now you went rest. But after you know, you're using it three or four times, that, that nodding out thing seems to dissipate really quickly. And they were, they were, people were not nodding off. Uh, one or two maybe showed a little bit. They were just lying there uh, totally uh, in, involved in the listening. And I'm looking at my computer and watching the EG trace and going, wow, look at this. Look what, what this is showing. Mm. And then when they come out, they, most of them reported, wow, it felt like a really refreshing power nap. One woman reported a sensation of floating, okay, for a minute maybe or so. Now, here's another thing that I observed is most of the deep delta changes seem to happen at around the 8 to 10 minute mark. Mm -hmm. One person showed it earlier at around 4 minutes. But for mm -hmm. the other three, it, it there's there's – there's something that kicks in, I think, that's my hypothesis, at around that time, or maybe it's just the duration of the effect takes that time to develop. But what, 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 I'm sorry, what was that time frame again? Between eight and 10 minutes. Eight and 10 minutes, okay. For, Interesting. for, for most people, you, you begin to see the big delta shift, the shift into delta waves, that's what I'm talking One. about. I was gonna. I was gonna say that usually in the literature out there, you know, there's not a massive literature because I don't think there's many studies of it of this. But no, I've, no. I've read many times that it, the brain wave entrainment takes that amount of time to kick in. You know, yeah, about ten minutes. About eight minutes. About eight minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's very good. Now I have a lot of experience with light induced, in other words, photic entrainment been doing this for, for years, 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And that kicks in much quicker, uh, typically a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. 
and it's very it's very strong and very obvious and 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 that's where most of my experience and research has been so when i saw that audio entrainment was producing a robust effect i got quite excited because i'll have to tell you that honestly i have tested a lot of binaural beat material over the years and i've never really seen anything very dramatic happen in the brain wow. huh. so so this really got my attention you know 